When you think of Danish kings, maybe you think of King Hamlet, or maybe you think of Vikings. When it comes to the Danish monarchy, sometimes it's hard to separate the legend from the truth. But the first king that most historians agree on is King Gorm the Old, who ruled in the middle of the 10th century. And we know that he existed because we can find his gravestone, or more accurately, his runestone. These runestones in the village of Jelling, Denmark, are sometimes called the birth certificate of Denmark. They commemorate not only King Gorm, but also his wife Tira and Gorm's son, Harold Gorm's son. Anyway, it's this Harold that we want to talk about, because according to his inscription, he won for himself all of Denmark, which doesn't look all that impressive on this map, but also all of Norway but really only this much of Norway, and only for a few years. Also, Denmark at this time didn't include all of the other minor islands, you know, like this one, or this one. I should mention here that Harold Gormson was most often referred to as Harold Blatand, Bla being the Danish word for blue, and Tand being the word for tooth. That's right, his name was Harold Bluetooth, most likely because he had a discolored tooth of some type. Now let's fast forward for about a thousand years to the high-tech world of 1996. Now this is a few years before Wi-Fi was invented, and at this time, text messaging was still fairly new tech. A lot of people were interested in getting devices like a cell phone to communicate with other devices like a computer. A lot of companies threw their hats in the ring on this. For example, Intel was working on something called Business RF. Ericsson was creating something called MC Link, most likely Mobile Computer Link, if I had to take a guess. And Nokia with the aptly named Low Power RF. It's a bit on the nose, but it's direct. Now, although all of these companies were eager to be the first one to get their product to market, they also wanted to be careful about a format war. I mean, this is hot off the heels of Apple versus IBM, or that notorious Sony Betamax versus JVC's VHS. Some of these companies realized that it would be beneficial to everybody if they could create a standard. That's why they created a special interest group, but that special interest group needed a name. Enter James Kardak, an engineer at Intel. Kardak is a self-proclaimed history buff, and he had just been reading a book about King Bluetooth and the runestones. According to him, Bluetooth was borrowed from the 10th century second king of Denmark, King Harold Bluetooth, who was famous for uniting Scandinavia just as we intended to unite the PC and cellular industries with a short-range wireless link. Now initially, Bluetooth was just supposed to be a placeholder name, while the marketing people came up with something better. But the names that the marketing team came back with were not that great. One that stands out is the name Flirt, which came with the catchphrase, getting close but not touching. A little bit less clever is Intel's proposal, Radio Wire. And certainly the least clever is IBM's idea, Personal Area Networking. But Harold Bluetooth's legacy doesn't end here. You remember those runestones I talked about? Well, here's what the runes actually look like. And there's a particular type of rune called a bind rune. That means you combine more than one rune. Let's take, for example, the initials of Harold Bluetooth. The first letter of Harold, H, which is the rune Haglas, looks like this. The first letter of Bluetooth is the rune Birkinen, which looks like this. Now, if this looks familiar, it should, because it's on your phone. This is the Bluetooth logo. Perhaps we should go back and change the inscription on that runestone to say that Harold who won for himself all of Denmark and Norway and made the Danes Christian and created a standardized protocol for communication between computers, mobile phones, and IoT devices. But that's just my suggestion. <laughs>